everybody. Welcome to the Weekend Zone. I'm Britt Johnson. You guys can follow me on all social media at I am Britt Johnson. It's your boy, Chris. You can find me everywhere at CK2K. What's up, everybody? It's Jackie Ray. You can follow me everywhere at JRay the Fanatic. All right, guys, it is time to get into honorable mentions. Usually we're on the show, we're bashing like the guys for saying stuff about the ladies, but now we have it in reverse. So I got to see what your guys' opinion is on this. So <laughs> Diamond DeShields, obviously she plays for the Chicago Sky and she um, was, you know, watching NBA basketball like everybody else has been doing right now. And everybody has been talking about that um, Utah Jazz and Denver Nuggets game when ESPN posted, it looks like LA Fitness at three o'clock right now. <laughs> everybody thought it was funny and she wanted to get in on the fun too. So she actually commented and said, they should all quit and go get a job making sandwiches. And then um, Twitter was not too happy about that. Uh, really? They were, on her, um, they were saying all this crazy stuff about how can she say this? And, you know, she and WNBA players are always wanting like to be stuck up for, and now she's turning around on her brothers and yada, yada, yada. Um, she kind of wasn't having any of it because she also um, retweeted another WNBA player who said this comment section, OMG, men are so fragile. And so um, sh I think they don't really care, but um, should they care, Jackie? So I, I watched the whole th the whole Twitter thing kind of go down. And yeah. when she she commented back like this little, I don't know, I guess it was an apology. And she she ultimately said, hey, Why? you know, I, I'm kind of standing by what I said. You know, it's, it's hypocrisy because of what men say about us. Mm -hmm. So I actually think she should have been drugged to the gods on this one because these NBA fellas is out here wearing WNBA shirts. You know, they're making commercials to help the failing audience of the WNBA who also are in the playoffs right now. I'm sure a lot of you don't know that because you're probably not watching them. So the fact of the matter is that she was completely wrong in doing this and the people who are dragging her are right. But if a man had said, okay, they should all quit and go make sandwiches, they would have taken it as sexist. They would have taken it as, oh, you need to be in the kitchen. It would have been this whole thing. So don't say something that you're mm. going gonna to sissy cry about if it's said about you. It's that simple. That's the hypocrisy of the situation. She's completely wrong. She deserved the dragging. I was here for it. Mm. Yeah, I guess. If, I know you want to say something about Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Because you're right. I, I mean, if you look at it from that, that standpoint, I mean, you're not wrong. I just, I'm taking it, I'm looking at it more so from the um, the dude's perspective hearing that, like, that I was I was going to ask, like, did they say anything? Because if they were upset, then I was going to have some beef with it. Like, why are you guys upset? Like, this, you know, this, the players. The, yeah. yeah, the players. No, it was no players. It was just. It was just the, the see, so just, I get that. I mean, if you want to go that way, then yeah, you're right. Because if, if we said the same thing about Powers when she was upset about, you know, people calling her number and we were like, yeah, well, if we did that in the NBA, we would be calling that player soft. So you got to keep right. it 100 for both ways so if you want to put it that way yeah all right well moving on to the nfl which a, a lot of hypocrisy happens there as well <laughs> um, but the nfl um recently announced that they are looking to do some sort of a bubble not for the season which is supposed to start in um about three weeks now but for the nfl playoffs if a season actually gets that far to have playoffs but we know the saints and the cowboys have both been doing bubble like atmospheres for their teams um and they said this is something that they are looking to do for the nfl playoffs again if we happen to get to the playoffs um mm. chris do you think that it's even it's pointless at that time like if we get all the way to january which when the playoffs would be happening um if they have been able to make it through the season don't you think it's kind of pointless at that point um to try to do a bubble then that's yeah. See, that's the other side of it. My, I'm I'm here over here trying to give the NFL any kind of credit because you know the NFL is not one to really take uh, think that far ahead when it comes to anything. They're one of those uh, as we've seen. They're a league that takes it day by day kind of situation for them to be prepared for that, even though it might not even happen. I, I'm gonna give a credit for that. But then on the other hand, you're right. It's like if you do make it the entire season the way that it's being played right now, which is going to be normal pretty much i say in quotes because normal is not normal no more but it's going to be regular games and there's probably going to be people getting infected and going you know in and out of playing and whatnot 
and you're still going through the season, then at that point you make right. it to week 17. We in the playoffs now. Then you might as well just finish it off that way. I mean, if 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 if, if you feel good with how the league went up to that point, you might as well just finish it out. So I'm giving the NFL credit for thinking ahead, but also they still the NFL and they're not completely thinking. So I, it's, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm on both sides of it. Yeah, definitely just save the save the energy. Right to the NFL's credit, right now I am very surprised they have had very few positive tests in the NFL, which yeah. is like huge. Their training camps have been going off with it without a hitch. Really, I've been watching um, the last couple weeks of Hard Knocks, which is probably the most boring season of Hard Knocks ever. Oh right, right. Gosh, definitely is. It's so rough but, to watch. <laughs> but um, you know, just to have both both the LA teams, and obviously here is going to be probably we're a hot spot here in LA so to see like both of the um, teams have do very well on their tests and not have any new positive tests and all that kind of stuff it is kind of like okay maybe they're figuring out little stuff here and there um, so I'm getting more and more um, positive in the way that like maybe we will have a season you know like I've been very like I don't know if we're even going to make it to a season but I feel like the NFL players or what are the coaches or whoever it is that's kind of putting it to these guys' heads that like we need to focus on this and you guys don't need to be doing this, that, and the third. It must be working because they have actually had very few positive tests, even in comparison to what the NBA had, um, even going into Initially, yeah. In, yeah, going into camp. So <sighs> to be determined, <laughs> we will continue yep. to see what happens. Yeah. Maybe the NFL at the end of the year gets our biggest L of the year. Who knows? And maybe <laughs> get our biggest W. Who knows? Um, but that is end of honorable mentions. Yes, yes, we're moving into athlete trash talk. And we actually got some trash talk. Well, even though one of the guys I'm about to mention has somebody else speaking for him mm. because, you know, he's not the one to uh, be on social media like that. And that is my child, well, one of my childhood favorite players, Trace McGrady has been my all-time favorite player of all time. But I, as a Knicks fan growing up and when I started to actually understand um, the Knicks, Stephon Marbury was one of those guys I was a huge fan of uh, growing up. And he's going against Jackie's boy, <laughs> LeBron James. Now, I just want to preface this by saying I do love Stephon Marbury, but he, for whatever reason, has the craziest grudge for LeBron James, and it has been going. I, I don't know where it came from. I, I never understand where it sparked from. But for as long as LeBron's been in the league, Stephon Marbury has not been a fan. And well, he that continued um, after Game One of the Lakers Blazers game, um, and and it went into it kind of went into after last night's game, but it was primarily after the Game One where he had a lot to say about LeBron. James. Now, it's if it was up to Stephon Marbury, it's LeBron James's fault why the Lakers lost Game One. Now, um, B. Scoop, Brand Scoop Johnson. If you guys know him, you should know him. He was the one that was speaking on behalf of Stephon Marbury, who was just going in on LeBron James. Um, he started off by saying LeBron James is supposed to grab 15 rebounds. He's six nine. Now, like we talked about, LeBron James had uh, he had a great game in Game One. It was yeah. just the others that did not do anything. LeBron James had a very strong triple double and but Stephon Marbury is like nah 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 we ain't putting LeBron James up there he's just as guilty as the rest of the Lakers but he's not done he continued to say and these are all through uh uh Brandon somebody Scoop. else's right yeah, exactly yeah. right right so uh Scoop also posted saying Stephon Marbury on LeBron James he shoots different without fans he continues saying I know he didn't put a rug on his head I don't have no hair. <laughs> I don't have no hair on this head. Somebody sent me a clip where his head was over his headband. What what was that about? So basically, you saw where LeBron James had some hair and um, oh my god, uh, Stephon Marbury. Anyways, it's not done. Stephon Marbury still going. And said <laughs> he's still going on LeBron James' hair. He said, "How are you going to have a ball spot?" And then the next season, it's all black, question mark. Oh, man, Jackie, hold it in. I can, ha, I can ha, see you. Look. Oh, okay. I'm not, we got one, one more, one more, one more, and then we're all done. I seen a dude put glue on his head. Don't that hurt? How you take a shower? If if you saw me, said all the ladies, all the ladies that have ever had a full frontal weave or or a lace front or a glue in are like, nah, it don't hurt. You tripping, <laughs> my guy? And I'm sure his girlfriend is rocking a wig right now. Shut up, he tripping. 
I think he's just not aware of how that works. I mean, obviously by him saying, "How you put glue on your hair?" For a million years, I don't think he realized. Yeah, he just got back. That's where New half York. the hair come from. You I know. know. And you it's know. Like, right. That's so true. <laughs> I don't know, but I just love how it shifted from LeBron James's game to his hair. That's just that's Stephon Marbury being Stephon Marbury, but Jackie, would I you feel like, like to defend that was man? very New Yorkish. We well, can't go back and coach. Y'all remember Stephon Marbury's a legend out there in China. He can't go back and coach his team because the league's not back. So he's he's just back here and he's just yeah. watching the NBA like everybody else, and he's not not nothing stopping him from his hate on LeBron James. And that's just what it is. But anyways, moving on to this last one. Jackie probably gonna be a fan of this one, but it's coming from Deshaun Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. You know the wide receiver. I don't, he doesn't even know introdu introduction. You know who he is. Um, he is a, uh, if you do not know, he's from LA. He is a diehard Laker fan. And like Jackie Ray, he is pissed off with the production or lack thereof that Danny Green was giving the Lakers in the playoffs thus far. And he had some very strong things to say about Danny Green. Um, he said this. He said, I don't care what anybody say. Okay. Danny Green, you weak as F. You out here playing like a bum. Get him off the team, man. Trash. It's not done there, though. He continued to say, I told y'all Lakers, y'all in trouble. I'm a diehard Laker fan, but I don't know. This ain't looking like us. So, obviously, this was after game one. You know, game two happened last night where the Lakers went out there and played. Or, excuse me, two nights ago on Thursday, whatever. Um, the, the Lakers went out there and looked like the first seed. They handled business against the Blazers. So, yeah, they looked a little bit better. But everybody was mad with Danny Green after that game. So, I think a lot of Laker fans were probably in agreement with Deshaun Jackson. And even after game two, when they won, he still wasn't that great. But um, Deshaun Jackson is feeling y'all pain. He's just like the rest of you Laker fans. But that's it for me. On okay. okay, so look. Last week, I know I promised you guys some really dope clapbacks. Um, I had them all saved. But I am just doing one clapback today because this is clapback. That oh, had yes. actually nothing to do with us. This one's hilarious to me. Um, if you don't know, Jamil Hill um, and Carrie Champion were talking to Charlamagne the God, and they were kind of talking about how what Carrie Champion had to go through on first take. How mm. um, when Stephen A. had that domestic violence situation, Jamil Hill had tweeted, "You know, it would have been dope if you asked the one woman in the room how she felt about it, and then maybe you wouldn't have been in this situation." Apparently, Skip Bayless wrote her a two-page email that basically told her she was trash, he made her career, she wasn't nothing, blah, 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 blah. Wow. So the two of them just kind of went back and forth. So I just go through the comments. I was appalled because I expected to see a lot more of encouragement like Charlemagne was doing, and it was the total opposite. It was like, and it was all, well, here's the thing, when you throw an insult, can you just say women? Can you say, oh, women should do this, women should do that. Women should be quiet, they should be seen and not heard. Why you have to put black in front of it? Why does that always have to be mm. black women should? That's what pissed me off. Nonetheless, I, I I landed on this comment. A friend of mine actually tweeted me, was like, oh, you see they're talking about you on this on this thread. And I'm like, why would they talk about me? I took it as me personally. It was the fumble sports. So Britt, I'm gonna have to ask you first on this one. So let me read it. It says, if you bring up race for every wrongdoing, people stop caring remotely as much because people use it for everything. Only time race should be brought up is when it's 100% proven it's a racial issue. This is the problem with black women. This is the easiest job a person can get and they're complaining. If they want their voices and opinions heard, start a YouTube channel or go make less money at the Fumble Sports. Damn. We wasn't even in this. <laughs> First and foremost, stay out our pockets. You don't know what we make. There's literally seven year olds on YouTube making three times what you'll ever make in your life. So that's number one, stay out our pockets because you don't know. So don't, don't assume you know. That's number one. Number two, why do we have to not have an opinion? Why do we have to be silent just because it makes you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to let Britt take the rest of this one because because I was, went in on the comments because y'all know I had time. So Britt, go ahead. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time for me to go super in on it, but I think it's funny how this person said like, oh, why is it always a race thing? And then literally turned around and said, black women do yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So you literally said what you said we shouldn't say. We should not acknowledge the fact that we're black, but you can say if it's something negative and point out black women do something. Like, I just thought that was like, just crazy in and of itself, just reading the cut. Cause I'm just like, you know, you just did what you <laughs> he said did it. for us not to do, right? Like right. you just did that. Like, mm. I don't know, people, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. I get comments like this on my own personal stuff of like, oh, whatever, this, that, and the third, and women are this, and black women are that, and blah, blah, and you're not even really black, and you're not even this, or like, there's so many things, and it's, it's, 
pointless to even interact with people that are like literally that slow. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I love it. I'm as kind as I can, but you're, you're a little slow, my guy. Like, I yeah. don't know. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, we are going to do our L's really quick. Um, I mean, that person definitely gets an L from all of us for yes. sure. Um, yes. I'm going to give my L, though, to Tom Brenneman, who um, is not the related to the Brenneman from uh, Hitch. But, no, um, I don't, not at all. This Tom Brenneman is actually the uh, announcer for the... Or, who knows how much longer he might have been fired in during this conversation if he was speaking on this. <laughs> but um, he was the announcer for the Red, said some homophobic slurs while on air, um, and then obviously tried to apologize while on air, and also still continue to call the game at the same time. And it was just a giant disrespect. Right. Like it was just terrible. Um, so he gets my L for the week. Yeah, my L, <laughs> my L is a funny one. It's not really an L, but it's an L in my mind because yesterday, or my goodness, last week, <laughs> we had the NBA lottery happen. Mm -hmm. And we saw that the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves got the first overall pick. But what's funny to me is we're all talking about LaMelo Ball possibly being that number one overall pick. And the person that was there to be the good luck charm for the T-Wolves was none other than D'Angelo Russell. So congratulations on getting that first pick. But you might have just helped your team draft a replacement. So my right. L goes to D-Lo for accepting uh, the role of being the representative for your team because that might not be a good look if they end up drafting LaMelo Ball for you. So hopefully you can be Chris, all right. I love how you turned that into a silver lining. To me. Right. <laughs> the focus. Not the fact that the Knicks, again, did not get a top pick. We weren't supposed right. to this year. We weren't supposed to. Our chance of getting a top pick was hella low. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Mine actually also comes Even from... Even when it's high, you guys don't get it. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, that happened twice. <laughs> and I know you were going up to this day. You were excited. You're like, yeah, we could I was hoping. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing. See, y'all come to CK2K. Y'all, you know, I was hoping, but I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, we, we, we've, seen, we've seen the videos. We know. We know. <sighs> um, mine actually also comes from the lottery, and it's also a funny thing, just because I didn't realize I had ran to the bathroom. I came back. I saw what I thought was a cartoon, but nope, it was Steph Curry's cornrows. In full effect, look like Aisha did him. He takes my L for the week. Go to go to a salon, or if you did go to a salon, go to a different one. This the cornrows was not. Yeah. They was not it. <laughs> it was not it. It literally it did look like Aisha did him because they look like the ones that like you always see Riley because Riley did yeah. it. Right. Cornrows, yes. Too. And I was like, that's Riley. Yeah. Twins. <laughs> They're twins for sure. Yes. 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 <laughs> Still love you, Steph. But yeah, no, that, was, that wasn't the look. <laughs> All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for Weekend Zone this week. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on all social media. Also, we have our live coming Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific yes. Standard Time, so make sure you check that out. And we will see you guys here next weekend. Bye. Peace.